in another episode of the Simple Simple Success Success Podcast. Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Surround me with dark energy and speed limits. That doesn't sound too positive there, DT. All right, positive is what we're supposed to be doing, isn't it? Doing? No, 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 no. Not just doing. It's what we are, my friend. We are not negative energy. We are positive and focused. You change you. You change everything. And you'll do very well to incorporate that idea into everything you do as well. Yes, you're right. And I do it that way. All the time? Depends on what you mean by all. How many of you follow the habit of of rendering more service and better service than you pay to render? Part of the time. Part of the time. Well, that's more like it. (laughs) That's more like it. Okay, part of the time. We'll go with that. It has to be all the time before too long, you know. Right, after we've practiced a bit more. Cool. So, what time is it? It's that time again when John gets to drop nuggets to turn success from a hard nut to crack to something simple that any one person can do. Wow, DT, what an intro. You sure do know how to put the fire in people's bellies. Fire in the belly? Oh, I'll not stop there, but before I burn this whole place down to the ground... What's this energy bubble stuff? Oh, well, this episode is about positive energy, specifically a positive bubble of energy. In today's podcast, we'll talk about how to share your positive energy bubble and invite people inside. DT, do you remember the Nintendo Wii balancing game from uh, 10 or so years ago? You're taking me way back, John. Of course I remember. Do you mean the one where the little girl floats above the rushing stream in a clear bubble and controls the forward and backward and side-to-side motions? Yeah, that was one of the games in there, DT. I see you have better memory than an elephant's. (laughs) Right. So, in the bubble, the girl is insulated from negative influences just by acting. If she'll only act. And the bee... The B is in the fabric of space. It's a potential distraction that could pop the bubble. I pay close attention to your choice of words, John. Even though you didn't say quantum theory or anything. And I have noticed that you said the B is a potential distraction. To me, the word potential means there is a possibility. That is not an open and shut case. That the B will wreak havoc. I'm glad you figured that out, DT. In and of itself, the B has no power. It will derive its power from what the girl inside the bubble does. What you do. You mean like a bee in a bonnet? Well, sort of like that. The girl learns to avoid the bee as well as avoid the sides, as either would pop her energy field and she'd fall in the water. Well, now that you've mentioned it, John, it has occurred to me that this game is deeper than most people know. It's the physical balancing, but it's not just that. I'm glad you caught that too, D.T., This just goes to show that we all can have a positive energy bubble. We only have to make the bubble by using our imagination. The next step of action is to have balance. Does this mean that I have to have balance and situational awareness to avoid the possibility of bursting my positive energy bubble? Yeah, it does. But it also means that we can all do it. It's not a preserve for a select few, the physically strongest, although that does help. Why do you say that, John? Well, CDT, many people think that they're weak, that they're powerless against forces of nature. But this girl in the bubble tells us otherwise. She tells us we all can control situations. Wow, I didn't see that. Now I'll look at people differently. Floating above a rushing stream in a clear bubble can wear out even the strongest of us. Right, unless we employ the right attitude. Yeah, unless that. It's all in your mind. It's all in the mind, E.T. Think positive. If you let it wear you out in your mind, then it will do the same in real life. In pursuit of wealth and a better life, you will float above rushing streams. If you don't have the wherewithal, you can burst your bubble and burst your dreams. I have also noted that the little girl is all alone in a bubble. She does not have any support system. Well, she does, actually. But it's internal where you can't see it. Just like the scientific literature says, most endeavors for better things, better life, and health, however you define them, are lonely undertakings. These experiences are personal. It's great if you have support. But if you don't, you have to put your boots on and dig in alone. In such instances, how does one's mindset help? Napoleon Hill said that you keep your mind on the things you want and off the things you don't want. It's a matter of deciding what you want to focus on. And... 
Choices have consequences. Exactly, DT. Choices have consequences. And it does help that it is a clear imaginary bubble that others can see what's happening. I think this gives me more motivation to succeed. That's the right perspective. You're on your own, but you're also setting an example for others. You don't let the stares or sounds from the gallery make you burst the bubble. Remember, the controls are in your hands. A positive energy bubble is a safe space where one can be insulated from outside threats. But this insulation is entirely dependent on what the person does. As you said, it's about tough choices. Have you read Think and Grow Rich yet? I think that question is directed at John, Alex. DT, that question is directed at anyone who wants to grow rich. And I think you fall squarely in that category. Oh, yeah, now that you've brought it up, does Hill have anything to say about a positive energy bubble? There are plenty of gems, but I'll drop just one. A positive mind finds a way it can be done. A negative mind looks for all the ways it can't be done. Which is to say that a positive mind finds a way to keep the positive energy bubble intact, right? Right, DT. And it's hard work at first. Does it get easier? It does, but not any easier than... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast. Financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level, or a basic intro level of just $0.99 cents per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there, and it's all easy. Before the break, you were saying how a positive mind finds a way it can be done. Well, a negative mind looks for all the ways it can't be done. That's right, D.T., a positive mind inside the bubble with all the decisions that have to be made will find a way so it can be done. It will not lose focus brought about by the constant distractions. If you get the chance to float above a rushing stream in a clear bubble while controlling the forward and backward and side to side motions, you earn a controlled presence of mind. A clear bubble is really no different from a brick wall. Not even considering things like cushions or, or mistakes, you still have to maintain control. That's a great observation, DT. With either a wall or a clear bubble, there's not going to be much margin for error. But there are learning opportunities, right? Indeed, there are. Plus, chances to get better. Yeah, the forward and backward and the side-to-side -side motions are the actions that determine if the bubble will burst or not. I see it. Most times, I'm the one who willingly gives up the controls and lets the energy conditions determine themselves. Which is why you need a positive energy bubble. Aye, aye, pourquoi? Which is to say, go on, why? Just elaborate, s'il vous plaît. When I want to focus on the golden light, I'll let you know. Okay, it's simple. A positive energy bubble is a protective and isolating envelope or cover that protects a person's positive energy from outside interference. The bubble is, of course, in your mind. It is unseen, but it is a cover that we intentionally put on to protect and preserve our energy. And we can invest the same way? Yeah, we can. We can at least think about things in a similar way for a good purpose. Instead of what? Instead of all the things people think. Like? Like maybe it's too late, or things are too expensive. Doesn't happen IRL, or in real life as the kids say. Does too. Just last night, I heard a guy whining that he couldn't buy a house because of interest rates going up and the stock market tanking, even though they make about a million bucks a year. So it really is attitude. Yeah, it really is. And where does that come from? Where does what come from? The positive attitude thingy. Oh, that. It comes from, don't say it, practice? That and the other thing. What other thing? The R word thing. Oh, that, yeah. Repetition. You said it. 
Your mental attitude is something you can control outright, and you must use self-discipline until you create a positive mental attitude. Your mental attitude attracts to you everything that makes you what you are. Napoleon Hill Court detected. Yes, indeed, Vina, and thank you. I see how self-discipline and creating a positive mental attitude connect with today's pod. I can control my emotions above a rushing stream in a clear bubble with self-discipline and a positive mental attitude. I'm making my own protective shield. Yet another instructive observation, DT. Thank you. It's one of the things I help with. But announcing breaks is not one of those things. Of course not, John. It's for our friend Daniel to announce all massive objects like... Break number two. We know a lot about you already, because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno, Sibyl. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Ooh, what a wonderful, relaxing break that was. Wasn't it, John? Mm, Yeah, what? Wake up. It's that time in the podcast where you do us all the favor of connecting this to investing. Okay, for starters, DT... Life is a balancing game. This is one of the biggest lessons you should take away from today's show. You must have some sort of balance when you're investing. Good stuff. I see you took that straight out of the Nintendo Wii balancing game. Investing is a balancing game. Is that why sometimes you hear that some companies are facing problems? Because, for instance, they're expanding too fast? It can happen. At times in investing, doing things too quickly or trying to chase a high or keeping up with companies can be catastrophic. What else have you learned? I learned that it's not my physical size that matters, but the size of the fight in me. I just need to do what I'm supposed to do. Excellent. Another takeaway is that you are the one who is in control, not situations, not circumstances, not outside influences. You, you are the captain of your ship. There will be distractions from within and without. You are saying that I should shut my ears to some noises that I perceive as harmless, or they should be music to my ears? Exactly. If you turn the buzzing of the wings into some other energy particle, such as music in your ears, then you will have a relatively easier time. A mind is a powerful tool, and if you harness its potential, you can overcome the outside threats that are threatening to burst your bubble. But bees can be such bothers. Okay, but as I found, that's attitude too. The bee is not your enemy. It's your perceptions that will determine if the bee is either friend or foe. Also, remember that the bee is outside the bubble and you have control. Yes, the bee is really on the outside looking in. Good point, Daniel. That should be one of the foremost things in your mind. The bee is on the outside, and it is only your erroneous action that can cause it to come in. This happens so many times in our lives. I remember you said that in the bubble, the girl is insulated from negative influences if she will only act. The operative word here is act. Yeah, we should not be afraid to act. We should look forward to acting. There is no middle ground. You know, for every action, there is a reaction. Think of it this way. If I start X, then it is possible to finish X. But if you don't start, then you can never finish. Which means that assuming I like finished, I should not be paralyzed by fear or indecision. 
Correct. Remember, you can't just know you have to do something. Okay, so what does the stream represent? Are there unseen or hypothetical effects? The stream can represent life or other things that are happening in your life. You know, like the things you're going through, the stream is running through. Streams also come with all manner of debris and beings. Thus, the stream can also represent the issues that people bring to you. Do you have one example of anyone who used their positive energy bubble to excel in investment or career dreams? There's lots, but the first person that comes to mind is the Terminator. Oh, do tell! Arnold Schwarzenegger. He started life in the tiny village of Graz in Austria, thousands of miles away from America. His father encouraged him to get into bodybuilding. At the young age of 15, he declared, I want to be the best built man in the world. Then, I want to go to America and be in movies. I want to be an actor. That's bold. I believe only a man or woman in a positive energy bubble can make such utterances. Makes sense. Arnold used the power of mind over matter to take him where he wanted to be. He knew how to deal with distractions and negative influences, which could make him burst his positive energy bubble. He was, so to speak, that little girl inside the bubble, without a pre-cut path on which to make it. Arnold's story is a testimony that people do come from far and anyone can make it if they put their mind to it. That is good. So you see, the things we share here aren't abstract lessons. They are lessons others have applied in their lives and they have worked. Will you please read Think and Grow Rich? It's on my to-do list, Karen. DT, I am glad that reading is starting to rub off on you. It's the energy shield you need to keep your thoughts from becoming dark matter. After some time with me, you'll be connecting and quoting that book in your sleep. I'm sure that will be good for my positive energy bubble. Even in deep sleep, I'll be floating above a rushing stream in a clear bubble and controlling the forward, backward, and side-to-side -side motions and winning at investing through practice. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, French Consultant, Virginia Mitchell, Media Expert, Favor, Abbasi E.K., Psychologist, William James, Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot, Sound Designer, Goodly Amo, Marconi, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Audio Props, Les Paul, Inspiration, Napoleon Hill and Earl Nightingale. We also have websites, and you can subscribe to both podcasts and get ebooks and other great stuff. You can send us a video, audio, or text message, but of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. And those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from the online tone generator linked in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on Pod Match and Listen Notes, where we consider guests and guesting on other pods. And really, finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams. The sound effects credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canoe CG, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play Most Stories, ERH, and Just Kidding. Yes. Yes, that's his name. All on freesound.org. Paul. <laughs>